Welcome to the show. So we are going to mount a injection pump on a 310. This is for the 1855 restoration, but um, I'm gonna do this as a standalone video just because uh, people might wanna learn something. Uh, took the pump into my local shop. Uh, they've always done great work for me. I've, that's one thing I've never really messed with is uh, injection pumps. Um, I'll do injectors, but there's calibration procedures and stuff. I know a lot of guys do them themselves and hey, more power to you. I like to have it professionally gone through and calibrated and the whole nine yards. Had this reset to 1855 specs, not turned up at all, not turned down. I'm not looking to blow her up. Just looking to make an 1855. Um, so yeah, if you're wondering, I get my stuff done at Diesel Equipment in Potterville. Not a paid endorsement, just they've always done good work for me. Uh, here's the drive shaft and gear. I need to get the old umbrella seals off. They sent new ones in the bag here. And uh, I don't believe there was any uh, wires tying the nuts. You can see, I can see there's holes in them. I'm going to get that gear off, get the seals off, and then get it all washed up. There's a little rust on it there from it sitting. A little rust there. And then we'll see about getting her mounted. Okay, there's the shaft. Oops, I want the opening of the umbrella seal, the front one, to face the front. I oiled it up a little so it slides on there easier. And where did I put my O-ring pick? Carefully, you don't want to stab the rubber. Walk it on there. Until it falls in that narrow groove there. There's one. The other one will face back. It keeps the fuel from going in the engine, and the front one keeps the engine oil from going in the fuel. The pressure of the fuel pushes out on the lip and helps seal it. So if you're getting fuel in the oil, this is a possible contamination point. They are fairly reliable, but they do occasionally leak. There, just like that, she's in the groove. A couple things we'll notice. The throttle lever is wired back, and that is, there's a reason for that. If you don't get that shaft in the inside and pull that and let it go forward, there's a piece that can drop down and, and make your life miserable. So uh, do not remove that wire until everything's installed. And we'll need to remove the cap off the end here. So the shaft can go in. Ping. And look, there's even a wooden dowel in there. Hmm. Haven't seen that before. I don't know if we can see down in there, but just see down in there. There's a slot that the shaft engages. Stay. Stay. And on one side of it is a dot. And on one side of this is a dot. So you want the dots to line up. So since the dot's on the bottom of that one, we want the dot on the bottom of this one. It goes in, but it's not that simple. Um, there's a tool for helping to compress that uh, seal down, because if you just push it in, chances are it's gonna fold back and then you will just, it'll pour fuel right into your crankcase. Um, but we need to do this with this half in the block. Could pull the, uh, I think that's called a quill, but the flange off the end here, take the nut off and pull that off and then put the shaft in the pump and then put this back on in there, but that's a lot of extra work. So we're going to do it this way. 
so there's an o-ring on the end here to seal it up against the cover and so let's see i determined i wanted the dot facing down so if i'm careful here i might want to get some more light and my pick probably blocking your view here but oh yeah there's a spot where it's not quite tucked in yet of course now I've turned it I think what I need to do is mark on the front here with a felt tip a sharpie which side the dots on so I can make sure that it's pointing down okay I got a mark out here so that my dots down Looks like that's tucked in there good. Come on. I thought it was. I lubricated the hole. I'm not seeing any sign of it folded over. There she goes. Hopefully. Where's my mark? Did I wipe it off? Yeah, you gotta be kidding me. I think I wiped off my mark. Dag nervit. Well, now I can pull it back out and see how good a shape it was. See if it was folded. That's what I meant to do. Nope, doesn't look like it. All right, I'll remark this. Okay, I came up with a better idea. I'm just gonna run one of the bolts into that bottom hole so I can physically know which side is down. There's the dot. Third time's a charm, right? That looks good. Yep, that looks like it's in there. There she goes. Time for the gloves to come off. Gotta pull it back up just a little bit. Drop the nut. Pick up the nut. Because the nut is tall enough. It won't get started with the uh, pump all the way on. I'm not going to put the gear back on at this moment because, well, the engine needs more assembly. I don't have the flywheel on to time it with. But there it is, engage the pump. So what I'm going to do is leave the gear out, make sure these bolts are threaded in enough to where they ain't going to rattle out. Put the uh, spring and plunger in that rides against the cover and keeps the shaft back into the pump. 
and then just temporarily put the cover on not going to put any sealing on it just uh lightly screw the bolts down keep that all in place nothing will turn the injection pump until i can get the flywheel on and that's when we will through the magic of editing editing instantly go to from here now the engine has magically appeared in the frame Ooh. or that might be coming in a different episode let's get the flywheel on um, got people chomping at the bit to know about those fuel injector tees that showed up in an earlier video so i got the rear plate uh, i had that all cleaned up i threw some paint on it just to keep it from rusting this is the side that faces the flywheel there's a pointer so i put a little white paint on the tip of that just so it stands out a little better when timing flywheel i've cleaned up the face where it fits against the uh, crankshaft make sure it seats in real good um, this one already had a timing tape on it right there is tdc top dead center and there's not much more for marks on these this tape is kind of handy it's um i'll post the part number for it i think there it is one six one one six one six three two a yeah one six one six three two a is the part number for this tape um you don't even have to have the engine out if you take the inspection cover off the bell housing that's down by the oil pan you can drop that roll the engine around until you see tdc then clean up the flywheel good so it sticks and put the tape on definitely makes things a lot easier so i think she's ready to go um i know i have the engine at tdc so i'm going to try to hang this flywheel so that this is facing oh let's see when we're facing it this way it should be about at that position somewhere close to it the bolt holes are unevenly spaced so they only go on one way in order to keep timing earlier tractors like 88s and even like 1650s uh 18 uh, some of the 1850s had dowel pin holes by the 55 series i guess one less thing to machine those are gone and you would think with the offset pattern that guys would you know there's only one way it can go on but i've seen cases where guys uh prove that wrong so just uh kind of pay attention to that it'll help you in the future and it could throw your balance off let's get her hung on a chain and on the engine look at me getting it dirty already there's a dowel pin here or dowel pin here <laughs> meat hammer here okay let's see which side of tdc am i on because it rotated a couple times on me no oh, i'm after i need to be before top dead center let's see if i can turn this by hand there's tdc Okay, for these turbocharged uh, 310s, timing is two degrees between top dead center. Uh, two degrees before top dead center. We can see the TDC mark there. Definitely uh, helps to illustrate it without the, the uh, bell housing on. Most cases, that won't be uh, a luxury you have. But on these timing tapes, yeah, the big marks are every two degrees. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. So the hat, smaller hash marks are your odd numbers. The bigger ones are the two or the even numbers. So we want to be since TDC is down here. We want to be at that first darker line after it, and we also want to be in the rotation of the engine to take up any backlash. So you actually want to go past top dead center or past your two degrees and then come back to it again and the engine turns this direction whoop 
let's see, whoop, that way. So we'll just take the pry bar. We'll double check this when we're done. But right there, looks like the pointer is pointing at two degrees before top dead center. Yeah, I believe the uh, non-turbocharged versions are four degrees before top dead center. Always consult your manual. Okay, we have a rebuilt injection pump. It should be timed up. Let me see if I can't make this more confusing than it needs to be. And not a weird angle. Oh well, you'll get the idea. So this inspection cover here is to help line up your timing marks. We'll just take out the top screw so it's one less screw to lose. So, <laughs> gotta eat those words. The injection pump shop should have, and they did. As you can see, there are two hash lines. One doesn't move, the other one does as it rotates. I do believe the front one doesn't move. I can't remember. Let's see, I'll just try to turn it out. The front one moves, the back one stays stationary. You want those two lined up when it's on the two degrees before top dead center over on a flywheel. So now we need to get the gear and these bolt holes, both on here and on the uh, gear, or one of the two, have different offsets on them. So you can put the gear on. If the bolt holes don't line up, try another spot, try another spot. If you get real close and you can't quite get it where you need it, then you can lo loosen up the mounting bolts and turn the injection pump just a little bit to get her right where you need it. Well, let's stick her in and see if we can find some teeth and holes that line up somewhere close. Boy, that one and that one, which got barks. They look pretty darn close. We can probably tweak the pump from there. Yeah, you can. I can tell. It's been in those two holes before. We're going back in. Now that I've lost sight of which ones they were. And these official bolts have a hole through them to wire it down. And I need to get a 5 16 wrench to tighten those babies up. I've always taken the front cover off and pulled this gear. Um, but it is... Uh, Pretty well captured. I was always worried about it jumping a tooth or something, but talking with Ross, the Oliver man, he's uh, always left these in and had no problem if you're just doing a injection pump work. So I guess there's no reason for it to move a whole lot. Of course, in this case with a complete overhaul, I'm tearing everything down. I'm gonna take it apart so I can get everything good and clean. click all right my mark has moved some those bolt holes might not work I will now go let's see I'm still pointing at two degrees I'm going to roll past and then inch up on her again and see where she's reading. That looks like two. That is not good enough. Must be I wiggled it some. So bolts come back out and we try another set of holes. So much for it being in the right spot. Probably as I uh, slid the teeth in, the helical cut turned it some. So what I need to do is leave the gear in there, take these out and turn this shaft to line up that, and then look for some holes. 
So now I gotta get another wrench. That looks somewhere around half inch, so it probably won't be, I'm sorry, half inch bolt, but three quarter inch. Oop, that turned easier than I thought it would. That's, that's pretty much it there. I like that, let's see if we can find any lined up holes. Not really. Now I could try to twist the pump that much. That's usually a bit of a challenge. Let's see. The shutoff cable's almost up to the block, so I can't go that away. And I, that's the, well that top hole and that hole look like they're lined up. I'm still there. Let's try it. Look at that. Okay, ratchet on the floor. Oh man, that looks just a little too far, but I can rotate the pump this way. All right, first thing we do, rotate the engine backwards again. Make sure we're taking the, oops, see, look at that. The gear came out some. And that lined it up. Yeah, just that gear walking out a little bit on the, the helical cut teeth change the timing. So now it's looking good. I'm still gonna back up the engine and then bring it up to two degrees. And I think I will temporarily throw the cover on here just uh, to hold some pressure against that shaft so that it doesn't walk out and throw the timing off, or the marks off. It'll only take a moment. A little bit of pressure. Don't even need the gasket. That's still on TDC, so we'll go backwards a little bit. Find out where I hid my bar from myself. There's 10, eight, six, four, and two. Let's go see our results. Well, that's looking pretty good. It might be just a little high on this side. I think, let's switch. I didn't tighten them nuts down very much. I gotta get my special wrench and loosen them up. There's my special wrench. Let's set it on this chair. It's just a half inch box on one end. Hold yours up. We custom made it before my time. Heat it up, bend it. Hold yours up to the TV and then heat it up and bend it in the same shape or your computer screen, whatever you're watching on. You can make your own. But it is super handy for getting that one that's on the back side there. Okay, that one's loose. We'll twist it ever so slightly and uh, I'll say tighten one nut up just to keep it from moving. That looks lined up pretty good. And then we'll once again back it up before. And then go forward again. Four, three, two. Oh, 
Boy, that looks good. Let's turn the light on just to verify. They're lined up. I'm gonna call that good. From there, it's just a matter of tightening the other uh, nuts down here. Let's get this top one before anything moves on me again. Yeah, that looks good. I like it. And we just got this baby back here to... And it's one that doesn't work so hot with a... While you're trying to hold a camera. We're gonna definitely do this one by feel. There's no getting a torque wrench on that baby. Lines are still lined up. We are at two degrees before top dead center. We just need to pull this cover back off, dope up the gasket and seal her up. We will also put this cover back on. When you take this off, there's gonna be fuel coming out. Just a word to the wise. Uh, Of course, with this being freshly rebuilt, no fuel in it. Whatever they run through it, they must drain out. Because it should have been calibrated and everything since it was professionally rebuilt. Maybe someday I could talk them into letting me film them rebuilding a pump. That would be neat. Then I might want to do it myself. Now I don't want to forget our safety wire. Now if the bolts were to come out, they're going to go like that. So you want this wire to pull down. Um, let's cross it over here. And send it through this bolt. I probably cut it plenty long. Always easier to cut off the excess than it is to put some back on. Granted, it's brand new wire. Oh, son of a. So, back to step one. Oh, and I even pulled the. No? Didn't quite pull the umbrella seal out. Except now it's turned enough. I almost have to pull it out because I don't know if the uh, dot is lined up. At least the umbrella seal wasn't folded over. Here's the dot. The dot is facing the bottom. Now I've got the fun task. Dot on the bottom. I'm trying to get that in there. I may have to take that gear back off. turned it I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing like that don't hook the umbrella seal looks okay still looks okay And there it goes. Should just be a matter of picking the right tooth. Now I gotta take the cover back off and double check that and see how bad I screwed it up. Let's see, I would say I'm off by one tooth. I need to come back out and go one more tooth that away. 
but not so far that the umbrella seal. The lines are close. Let me go around, back it up. Okay, we are back on again. Real men of genius. Oh man. All right, so before I so rudely interrupted myself, I'm amazed that umbrella seal slipped back in so easy. But when you're doing this, make sure the gear doesn't pop out when you pull on the wire. Take it from me, some guy on YouTube. This wire's got a bend in it that is gonna make me angry. And I might just go cut a new piece of wire off the spool. Yeah, let's just start fresh. No sense in tearing up crying any more than I have to. I guess uh, pulling it back out like that, I got to see that I did have the umbrella sealed in, right? Because well, years ago I got one in it folded over. When you pull it back out, it's pretty obvious. Because it'll kind of keep that shape from being folded over. At least for a few minutes. Let's not have a repeat. Get that tight. Get that tight. I know the last time I did this on YouTube, I had some... Uh, airplane mechanics watching and they are very particular about this of course there's a lot level higher level of safety concern with airplanes tractors don't fall out of the sky and there's the phone so as you can see the wire comes out of this side goes down around here but that keeps it's pulling the bolt towards its tightening direction so if it does want to come loose it can't go because the wire and same with the other wire comes around there but when I tore it apart, there were zero wires, so I guess uh, it held that way. I bought new injectors. These are Stanodynes, not aftermarket. And nice thing is they come with a carbon dam installed, the white ceiling ring there, because uh, getting that on kind of stretches it and then you kind of have to wait for it to go back down or whatever. And then there's this ring, the ceiling ring for the top. So I've put a little engine oil on there just to help it slide in a little better. Here's the seal that goes up top, which is already on there. Give it a little wiggle as it goes in, it slides right down. Get this clip on there. The spacer that goes underneath it. This clip comes with the injector, and then you got your other hold downs and stuff that you need to save from your previous one. My experience was in the past, and I still hear the same thing now, is that these inje pencil style injectors just aren't really worth rebuilding. There we go, if we get it in the right spot, it goes in. Um, they can be done, but you're probably just as far ahead to uh, buy new ones for what it costs to rebuild the old ones and possibly a little bit lower performance than fresh. Oops. All right. I am not going to tighten these bolts until the lines are all on. That gives me just a little bit of wiggle room to help get the nuts started. And then... Once the nuts are started, then I'll tighten these down. Drop that on the floor, then pick it up. 
I don't know why the threads are wider on these bolts than the shoulder, but it is. So if you uh, slide the top of the bolt into the clip, then it fits just fine. I've put anti-seize on these injectors before, but generally they don't pull out too hard unless something bad has happened. Like this engine had blown a head gasket. They had tried to uh, pull start it with water on top of a piston. I don't know if they uh, necessarily blew the head gasket, but they did after they did that because that water came up, couldn't compress, blew the gasket out. But I think it forced some coolant or water up around the uh, injector. So these two here um, did not come out easy. I knew I was taking the head off, so I just tapped them out from underside and they came out fine that way. Normally, I don't have too much problem getting them out from the top, but a little engine oil helped prevent corrosion, help them slide in. And I have used anti-seize in the past and never had any problems with it. So I guess if you want to do that, don't let me stop you. And just in case I didn't catch the last one, it's a lot easier to do these. And I think it's probably really the only way to do these is to take the exhaust manifold off just they come up at an angle and get close to the manifold. It just really, it's not practical to change them. And uh, usually these manifolds don't come off too bad because anytime someone's done injector work, they pulled the manifold off. So it's not like the nuts have been on there for 50 or 60 years and, and uh, a permanent place. All right, that makes me feel better. One less place for dirt or a fly or who knows what to wander down into the engine. So maybe the next step should just be, let's go ahead and get injector lines on. I've got them uh, pretty well cleaned up. Just gotta blow them out, make sure they're good and clean. I've flushed them out with mineral spirits, but put some air to them to blow any last, hopefully any last remaining stuff in there. Good fresh new mineral spirits pumped through them. So I wasn't like I was dumping old or pushing old crud through. Well, I separated all the lines off from their holders because, well, you know, want to get them cleaned up. And now I got to figure out which ones are which. I do believe that's number two. So I think it's one, five, three, six, two, four. So that lines up good. We'll keep trying them out. Okay. Let's move that one out of the way for the moment. I may have to loosen that banjo fitting on there to get this one to uh, put a little tension to it. Maybe that's not all bad. We definitely want to leave the injector end loose for bleeding it out later on. We'll eventually want to get this end tightened up. So let's try number two next. Yeah, this one looks like it's pointing a little high. I'm gonna get an end wrench and loosen that banjo fitting up. And last but not least, number one. Ah, my kit came, <clears throat> excuse me. My kit came. I am going to try these uh, Brass return tees. I guess John Deere came up with a kit. They use this same style injector and in some of the like the 404 and the 466. And um, so they had a kit, and A and I has since come up with one. And I figure something this simple, they probably can't mess up. Uh, there's the part number. That's the John Deere part number, the RE27786. Allstate Ag Parts seem to have the best price on it, so that's where I got it. So let's see how well, there's no guarantee. It looks like it might be all right, but I might have to, since this is for a John Deere application, there's no guarantee that the uh, spacing is gonna be exactly the same. We'll get started on them and uh, see how well they go on and fit. And probably once again, uh, things ain't quite tight yet. 
So I'll get them all in place first, and that way if I need to tweak anything, I haven't crushed any uh, seals or anything yet, and go from there. There's your T. There's two sizes of these rubber ferrules. A bigger one that goes on the injector, a bigger nut for down there. Pretty straightforward. Um, let's see, that should... I might have to put the nut on first. Whoa. But all it does is uh, come up and compress that rubber against the injector and the brass T seals it up. So if it does leak, all I gotta do is just get new uh, rubbers or just tighten it down a little more. And we'll see how close that line is between. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get the tubing cutter out and uh, cut them to length. Not a big deal. Mark this baby. Let's see how far in it sticks. About to yay far. I might have to do this in a vise. I can't quite get enough grip on. There we go. Maybe it's got a little too tight. Yeah, or just get a pair of pliers. Well, it doesn't have to bottom out rubber is going to be on the outside of it and squish down there let's put a nut on it just to demonstrate yeah you see rubber doesn't go in nut goes over so it's going to seal on the outside edge there so if you come up you know a little bit short it's not going to hurt anything Let's get the other nut. I like the rubber compressions for something like this. Um, it's not a high pressure thing. Any misalignment or whatever, when that rubber squishes down should take care of it. Um, so it doesn't have to be super perfect. Although if you push them pretty much all the way down, they should be pretty even. Everybody that's gotten one of these that I've talked to has upgraded to this. It's really happy with it. Well, that was quick and easy, but the biggest thing I can see without, you know, trying it, hopefully uh, it seals good, but um, be nice if they sent a cap and seal for each T on the end, but this is everything they sent with it, enough to get between all the injectors. I'm not sure what all deer does, but Oliver comes down and it's a line that comes off the injection pump for pressure relief there, goes up into the return lines, goes through and then another line comes off from here and goes up to the fuel tank to return the fuel. You may be asking why, and it's just, um, there's a small amount in injectors that leak by when it's injected and need, that pressure needs to be relieved. And so, uh, same thing with the injection pump. 
certain amount of pressure that has to be in here and there's actually a check ball in here to keep that pressure up but then the excess can uh, go on back to the tank so uh, different rpms you're gonna have more return just because maybe the fuel pumps putting out more pressure than the system needs at this rpm but at full throttle you're gonna get less return because more of it's going in the engine um, but that's why we've got it this uh, with the exhaust manifold being right here these brass fittings are going to be able to take the heat a lot better and like i say if they do start leaking take them off get new uh, rubber rings to put in there put them back together so i will have to figure out which fittings those are and get a couple more ends and seals so i can get the rest of that on there not a big deal at this point though i will get the rest now that it's all basically where I could tighten it down, I'm gonna get the, the clamps on the lines here. And uh, there's a brace that goes right here. Get that back on so that's all, uh, that way I can kinda tweak the lines or whatever before I finally give everything a final tightening. And then these nuts here at the injectors, I'll keep loose just because I gotta, I'll have to bleed the system and that'll be something that's covered in the day it gets fired up, which is a few days down the road. Chances are you won't have to uh, ever unclamp. I just did it so I could really get those cleaned up between the lines and everything. And uh, fortunately there's other Olivers around to look at. Just making sure none of the lines are touching each other because it's they will rub through if you put your hand on one while finger on one while it's running you can feel especially an idle you can feel those pulses of that high pressure fuel kind of put some vibration in the line and so if they're touching each other they will eventually rub through so i'm gonna go around and check these because i know i loosened these two up i'll check them all to get everything lined up and then tighten these up these are already tightened up and then I can tighten the injectors down. Click. I'm sure there's a torque spec for that. The fun one, number six. It's not impossible. Now I think the injectors are where they're gonna be. The lines are pretty much holding them. Still have to tighten these down. But I want everything else in place. I'm gonna just seat these. I don't have to crank them down, but that'll kind of make sure the ferrules are lined up pretty square. And then loosen them back up when it comes time to bleed them. Tighten these down. To, it's a 5 16 bolt don't overdo it to just the right spec whatever that may be Oop. Oh, I might not have enough hands seems like they still twist fairly easy even once they're tightened down pretty good which I guess is nice that they, I can line everything up as long as it seals. I like it. I found nuts through Amazon. Um, there were other places that probably a little bit cheaper but then you also had to pay shipping and I didn't have to on this and could just click a button so maybe your local uh, fitting supplier of your choice might have something I'll put a link down in the because uh, there's also the rubber oh, these are called a Viber lock fitting there's a rubber line down in there this one's quarter inch so I got a box of extra rubber ferrules and a box of nuts. And I'll have them for other projects. And 
get this in there. Or maybe I should start with that in the way it's aiming. So this is a bleed off for the uh, injection pump. There is a check valve in here. And uh, oh, if your pump is old and there's a, uh, a ring in there, it's kind of a plasticky material. And um, but if it starts falling apart, bits of it can get caught in this. Um, then the pressure, internal pressure gets wrong inside the pump. And next thing you know, the tractor starts running her off and stalls and dies. You shut it off, go to start it back up, and it runs all right for a while. Now that little bit of whatever came out, if you uh, take this fitting out and, and find the little plasticky pieces in it, that's probably what's going on is that ring is going bad and the pump just needs going through. This one is actually a genuine Parker nut, and I believe the the rubber is too. For it. So these A and I's are something aftermarket. I'm gonna turn this until it lines up. That way, all the hexes are all nice and lined up, so that no one will ever see them because the manifold will be in the way, except for here on YouTube. But uh, so you can you can see there is a slight difference and the P4 is on on the nut on the Parker one, whereas the A and I are not. No, even the Parker box even said made in USA. So that's good too. There, the fuel system on this side is ready to go. I could put the fuel line over to the fuel filter, and then I still have to. Make up a line to go from the pump to the fuel filter here and then another line to go from the pump to the tank and i also have to get line to make said line so that's something i should be looking into the fuel line is on from the filter to the injection pump took some anhydrous ammonia hose slit that open and slid it over there so it doesn't rub against the uh, block and also probably help with heat transfer as in slow it down this end this nut was pretty well stripped out and now that i do think about it <laughs> they had like a hose clamp on here and some rubber or like hose so i guess i shouldn't be surprised that this nut was bad i didn't have another one that size so i robbed it off another line for now i will get some more coming um, i'll put that probably get that on amazon and if i do i'll put it down in the description I think the fuel system is about as far as it's going to get for the moment. I got to get the, some 5 16 fuel line to make up new pieces. So I probably need a footish to go from there. It's probably about four feet or so to go from there. I will find something. I might have something around now that I think about it. But that uh, wraps up the fuel system by and large. Hope everybody uh, got something out of it. and uh, Maybe it'll help you someday down the road. Especially if you got to pull your pump. It's not bad. Just a matter of timing things right. And getting that umbrella seal, seal in without folding it over. So we will see you in the next one. And I appreciate everybody watching as always. Thank you.